Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well, staying safe, staying inside, washing your hands, hanging out with your families, and just generally behaving. <laughs> welcome back to Football Therapy, and welcome to another news video. Where I'm actually going to be talking about transfers, funnily enough, but what I've done this morning is I've gone through the headlines, and you know what? I get how in difficult testing times, Perhaps these headlines don't really mean much, but some of them are recurring themes and it's just interesting for me to express my thoughts on these stories to you and pretty much some of this stuff does spark up relevant discussion so it's gonna be fun and hopefully interesting for you guys a quick and big thank you to everyone who's donated to my NHS fundraiser we've beaten the target so far but I want to keep going there's a link in the top of the description if you want to express your kindness and donate to the NHS and my campaign and also have the chance to win a Chelsea shirt click on the link all right, let's get into it. Right, let's start up with one that has been going around the headlines this morning that I'm probably going to dismiss rather quickly for a bunch of reasons, and that's Chelsea being linked with Bayern Munich's captain and a big, strong Germanic goalkeeper, Manuel Neuer. Yep, 34 years old, maybe six years ago, widely regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. Now, while 34 is not the oldest goalkeeper ever, Willy Caballero was kind of doing a job and goal at 38, 39 or whatever. Still, in terms of a large investment, too old for me and past his best. I personally would much rather keep Kepa Aretha Balaga and not replace him with Manuel Neuer. Now, personally, let me know where, uh, let me let you know where I stand on Kepa. My stance hasn't changed, I maintain he's a very talented goalkeeper with probably quite a high ceiling in terms of what his ability can sort of get to or like his performances, do you know what I mean? But at the same time, if the Chelsea gaffer, if people at Chelsea do want to replace him, like perhaps they respect how he's very talented but cannot trust him to maintain form in the long run and that's maybe why these targets keep coming up in the media uh, you know maybe why he was dropped for a bit longer than we all thought he would be still Kep has come in and been very good for the last couple of games when football was still happening in that long time ago so perhaps transfer funds could be better spent throughout different places on the pitch but I kind of get while they're still being talked about and there is still a very good chance Chelsea will probably buy, well, I don't say probably, there's a chance Chelsea will still buy a goalkeeper in the summer. Even if that's just like a decent backup goalkeeper to challenge Kepa. Regardless, not Manuel Neuer. So let's move on from one goalkeeper to another one, one that has been linked with Chelsea before, one that would be a good investment, more realistic, and has been flowing around the headlines yet again these last 48 or so hours, and that is Milan a youngster, well he's not a youngster anymore, Gianluigi Donnarumma. This has been reported by Italian publication Calcio Mercato, Calcio, Calcio Mercato, you know that one. The Italian publication is saying that although contact has not been made yet, it's to their understanding through contact that Chelsea are putting together a proposal, I guess, for the young Italian goalkeeper. Now, Donnarumma is a bit more like it in terms of buying a goalkeeper for the long term. Sort of, I know people thought the same about Kepa, but Donnarumma, right, he's only 21 years old, so he's a few years younger than Kepa. Kepa's still considered quite a young goalkeeper. Donnarumma's 21, so you think, oh, that's young. Can you buy a goalkeeper that young? He has got 190 appearances for Milan as like their first goalkeeper. 190 at 21! This dude was the first team goalkeeper at 17 years old. He's an absolute giant in that goal. He'd be a superb investment. Again, I'm not hating on Kepa. I'm not saying Chelsea should sell Kepa. I'm just, you know, speculating on this. if this had to happen, if a, if a goalkeeper had to come in, Donnarumma would, of course, be an excellent choice. Right. Donnarumma's contract runs out at the end of next season. Milan's goalkeeper, they're not like... I mean, they're not the powerhouse they used to be, and it's a goalkeeper who's got one year left on his extension. Of course, he's considered like a superstar goalkeeper already, really, but the price being touted is still loads of money. Yes, the asking price would be requested to be something like at the tune of 54 million pounds. 
54 million pounds. On the okay, 54 million pounds. If he had three years left, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll pay that. I'll pay that, man. That's good. An amazing young goalkeeper. You know, hot property in the transfer market in world football. But 12 months left, 54 million pounds. Come on. I mean, come on. What if he does want to go, signs a new contract to like then leave? He'll probably be a world record fee. Actually, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. Point being, on the surface of it, 54 million pounds for Donnarumma to sign a six, seven year deal or whatever, like Kepa did, wouldn't, wouldn't be like a bad thing on the surface. But when you look closely under the microscope, 12 months, doesn't want to re-sign. Come on, dude. For a goalkeeper, jeez. But that's one issue. But another thing really worth talking about here is Donnarumma's representative agent, fat man, is Mina Riola. <laughs> right. Riola is one of these super agents. I'm sure you all know loads about him. Obviously, he's got... Isn't Harland his agent? I think Harland's his agent. No, Har he's Harland's agent. Regardless, he is Paul Pogba's agent. That would have been the most, like, obvious one, right? Now, Riola's caused loads of trouble with Manchester United because of his client Paul Pogba. He's an incredibly toxic figure as an agent. He talks to the media all the time. He was slagging off Manchester United so, so much. Now, I'm not in like, you know, I've got no interest to come in and defend Manchester United. I'm sure they've done a lot of stuff wrong with players recently, you know, that have come in and signed and perhaps their career's gone backwards, like the Memphis Depies of this world. You know, there's, there's been a few, but it's so unprofessional to be an agent, represent this big player, and then just saying they ruin players and, you know, he's just gobbling money and cake all the time. And he's just this sort of toxic figure. And a club like Chelsea, who don't like to be taken for mugs generally, especially financially, you'd imagine they'd be so, 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 so reluctant to deal with the likes of Mino Riola. Now, if you said to me, what's the biggest thing about this deal to put you off? Would it be the price tag? Would it be the fact how you're still unsure about Kepa if, or if the coach might still be unsure about Kepa? I'd say, no, no, it's Mino Royola. If Chelsea are trying to rebuild this new sort of legacy with Lampard and the youth and, you know, hard work and stuff and not getting ripped off in the transfer market, bringing Mino Royola in, into that is just not a healthy thing. So we'll have to see, but I'll of course keep you updated on any and all news story, goalkeeping deals, headlines. Anyway, let's talk about Moussa Dembele before we wrap things up. Manchester United and Chelsea want Moussa Dembele. And you can understand why the 23-year-old has registered 29 goal involvements this campaign in just 42 appearances. 29 contributions in 42 appearances is a very good return, especially perhaps playing in a team that's not like a powerhouse of the league, like Lyon, probably one of the better teams in the uh, league, uh, of course, but still, it's not PSG, it's not like, I don't know, a top four team in another more superior league competitively, I mean. So, yeah, it's a very good return. He's still very young. He's got a lot of experience going, playing in the Scottish Premier League, obviously playing in English football as well, and then going over to France. At the age of 23, he is a seasoned striker, and you can understand why Manchester United, who wanted Haaland, are going in for Dembele as well as Chelsea now. Now. Now? A lot of nows there. It's been reported that Lyon do want Chelsea to bite the hook again and buy the player. Now, I think, or I could speculate, this is because of what's happening in the world right now and with that world football, financial troubles might come in the summer and clubs might want to sell their best assets to make them a more stable business. You can imagine the 80 million pound fee that was being touted for him uh, in January will dissolve away or just after because Chelsea had a 34 million pound bid waved away quite quickly by Leon. You'd imagine Chelsea might crank it up a little bit, 40, 45, who knows, 50 if they really want the striker. 80 million seemed ridiculous. Now Manchester United might come in and play a lot of money for him, maybe, I don't know. But Greenwood's coming in behind Martial and looks very, very good indeed. Personally, I've said this on the channel before, probably the last couple of videos as well, I like the idea of getting a striker to test the waters first and maybe you know a loan to potentially buy and I've talked about Lukiovic. I think he's more like cultured and quality than Dembele personally and I like the idea of getting him as an option probably for around the same money as Dembele 
but maybe, like I said last video, a structured deal like the Mateo Kovacic deal where you loan him and then you have the sort of option to buy open with negotiations with Real Madrid after. But beggars can't be choosers and Chelsea needs some form of striker to help Tammy Abraham up front, push him on, compete with him, who knows, maybe even bench him. That could be Moussa Dembele, provided it is not silly money in the summer. But obviously, stop by Football Therapy daily. I will keep you updated with any movements of these transfer stories, whether it be new headlines, perhaps agents or players saying stuff. Come to me, I will tell you. And if you've enjoyed the content today, everyone, I'd really appreciate you liking the video. That supports me a lot. Why not subscribe to the channel if you're new? Because most of my viewers aren't subscribers. So if you come back and view the video, just make sure you're subscribed, man, and hit that bell notification button. It's important, man. Come follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football that's not happening. Stay safe, stay at home, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.